In this video, I want to go over something that a lot of people keep asking me. I got it a lot when I was doing the CSEN, and I'm getting it again now, the CCNA has started. And the question really comes back to, how would I study for the CCNA? You know, what advice can I give you in order to pass the CCNA? And it really comes down to understanding how you study as an individual. And some of you may know that, some of you don't. So what I want to do is just pop together a video to give you my views and opinions on how I would tackle the CCNA or really any study material moving forward. And hopefully it might give you some ideas. Now, of course, this is what I do. Doesn't necessarily mean it's right. There is no right way. There is a lot of wrong ways, but, but ultimately remember that doing something is better than doing nothing. And that's the key thing to remember. So what we'll do, let's dive into some of the stuff that I would recommend and how I would approach the CCNA. And any questions or comments, pop them below. And if you have any tips for anyone else, again, share them below. Cheers. So the other bit of advice I can give you is to make sure that you study first. Study before anything else you do. So before you turn that Xbox game on, before you play that game on Steam, anything, make sure you study first. And the reason for that is because I find once I start you know, playing games or start watching a TV series, I end up getting caught up in it, spending hours and hours, wasted time just doing that. And then afterwards, you've released all that endorphin. There's no uh, motivation to actually want to study. So use your... Uh, tactics and uh, kind of use your time more wisely and make sure you study first because doing that will actually enable you to feel productive to begin with not feel guilty when you're actually playing that game or you're watching that tv or spending time with you know your loved ones or f friends or whatever you feel productive you feel like you know at least i've done something good today at least i've studied at least i've finished that chapter at least i've watched that video so before you do anything get into a routine where you study first. That is one of the most important bits of advice I can give you based on my experience so far. Hello Coco. Come on in. Come. Hello. Unfortunately, the wind's pretty crap, as you can hear in the last clip, so I'm going to have to do the rest of the video indoors. So I'm just going to continue on with this presentation. Uh, second is how I actually study myself. So in my uh, preference, I prefer videos. And the reason I prefer videos is because I'm not great at reading um, a lot of the books. I find them quite dry, and I also find it very difficult to follow the author, especially when I don't understand the technology. So when I watch a video, my goal of the video isn't to understand the technology inside and out. That's what the book's for. My goal of the video is to understand the theory of the high level kind of technology that video is trying to explain to me. So if I didn't understand, for example, OSPF, I'd watch a video on it try to sort of get an understanding of, okay, it's a link state protocol. It runs to the Dijkstra algorithm. It uses things called link state advertisements. And then after I've got that kind of theory in my head on how I believe it works for a video, I would then go and have a play in a lab and see if I can get it working. Once I had it working and I've sort of happy with the video, that's when I'll turn to the book. And the reason for that is because the book will always have a lot more information than the video. And now I understand and had a good play with it, I find it a lot easier to follow the author and to actually understand and fill in those gaps of how the technology works. And then I go back and do my labs. So for me, that's kind of an order. That's how I approach it is it's, you know, go get the theory overview, go play, see if you can make it work based on those videos, you know, get, get familiar with it then dive into the books. Because if you understand what the author is trying to articulate, it's much easier to follow along. Uh, I, I know a lot of people that don't like videos at all and just watch and just read the books, great. But for me, that's my advice and that's the order that I do it in. Now, the other thing that I, I think is probably the best uh, bit of advice that I can give is about note-taking. Um, and notice I put here, physical and electronic. And the reason this is the best advice is because when I'm going through the videos, the labs and the books, I always make physical notes. So I have small revision cards 
and I make notes on there. Whether that's factual notes, like which port does HTTPS run, or whether it's kind of a paragraph with missing keywords, or just facts on a bit of paper that I need to remember, I always make physical notes. Now, after I've made the physical notes, and I'm at to the point where I've watched the videos and I've labbed it, when I start going through the books and labbing, that's when I make electronic notes. So this is where I use, personally, I use OneNote, um, but obviously there's plenty of other note systems out there. And you might think, well, I'm kind of duplicating workload here, and I am, but the reason I make it electronic is because after I move up in my career and take, for example, the CCMP and the CCIE, I have a huge uh, sort of note base where I can actually refer back to and actually fill out further. So for example, at the CCNA, maybe I make notes about OSPF, how to form neighbors, how uh, the, the protocol actually works at a very high level. And then when I get to CCMP, I then start to add what virtual links are, how you can do uh, stub areas. And then as I move to IE, I start to realize what's a sham link. And eventually you're left with this really in-depth, detailed and you know, correct because you've built it over valuable uh, resources over time, note base that helps you to refer back to during your working day. The amount of times that my note system has helped me through troubleshooting or through a design because I'm able to refer back to my notes that I made many years ago on how protocols work and I understand how each of these elements within those protocols work rather than being the engineer that just Googles it or goes on the forums. So for me, the notes are crucial, electronic so I can refer back to it in the future and build on it and physical because I don't know why, but when I write it down physically, I learn it a lot better than I ever do when it's electronic. So here we are. These are my, you know, bunch of physical notes I've just pulled out. It's quite a few of them that I've made sort of over time. Uh, and then eventually kind of the way this works is I have each of my notes. And what you'll see is each of the notes have sort of these are, for example, CCIE version five, they're from I and E. Uh, they're regarding VLANs, and it's on the advanced tech course. And this is number one. And then I have obviously number two, number three, and each of these just continue to go. Um, so, for example, this particular card says, "What are the three types of VLANs?" And on the back, we've got uh, standard, extended, and internal. So three types of VLANs. And each of these cards, and then or each of these sort of topics, are then sort of just you know grouped together. So this particular group is all the layer two uh, cards for the CCIE. And it has VLANs, rapid span injury, uh, MST, voice VLANs, uh, support security. There's all sorts of just topics in there. Um, and that's kind of what I do. I kind of put together where the notes come from, kind of the notes themselves, obviously, and the order of which the, the video plays and the note is taken. And the reason for that is simply because if I make a bunch of physical notes, I need to know the source of that information. Because as you know, when you're comparing videos with books, with labs, not everything is always accurate. And it's important that you understand where it's from to make sure that as you develop your knowledge of a particular topic, you can go back and identify whether, you know, you misunderstood it or whether that content was incorrect. So maybe for example, uh, one book says, this is the VLAN range where uh, the videos say something else. You can look at your notes, maybe your notes has got something else, and then you, before getting confused, you can say, hang on a minute, one of these are wrong, one of these are right, and you can go and figure out which is which because you remembered where the source of the actual uh, notes have come from. So that's what I do. I try to keep a good um, sort of physical notes stack, stack up. And then the way I do it is every couple of weeks, I would go through a topic that I've not done in a long time. Uh, and sometimes I do it before I go to sleep. The next bit of advice is little and often is best. And this doesn't apply to everyone, of course, because everyone is different, just like all these bits of advice. But from the majority of people that I've taught in the past, most people tend to find that if they do a little every other day or every day, it's better for them to maintain. And what I mean by that is we have friends, family, commitments, and we don't have the luxury to 
sit down for a month and study four hours a day and get our CCNAs. So some of us, we do great, but not everyone does. And because of that, what we don't want to do is have the rest of our life suffer for something that we're trying to achieve. Because if something is suffering because of the time you're spending studying, then that will eventually catch up with you and you will find studying to be a negative impact on your life. So prioritize accordingly. If you can do two hours every day or two hours every other day, that would be really beneficial for you in the long term than it would be doing four hours every day until you pass. Now, again, this doesn't apply to everyone. If you have an exam deadline, if your job's told you you have to get an exam by a particular date, then obviously you might not have the luxury to doing little bits like that every other day. But for most people who don't have that deadline and trying to keep motivated, trying to put it into their routine and trying to obtain their goals, don't overdo it day one. Start two hours. If you can do two hours, start one hour. Do it every day. Do it every other day. Try to get into a bit where you can say to yourself, I can do one hour every day. Great. Do that one hour every day because doing it every day will benefit you more than trying to do six hours day one, not doing anything for three days, six hours again, not doing anything for a week, a day again. It just won't work. You'll just end up forgetting all the information because the repetition isn't there. So try to do little as often because that tends to help most people through their exam. Find a space or an item to signal learning. And the key thing here is the signal. And what I mean by this is you need to understand that when you're going to study, there must be a routine that motivates you to study. And this is quite an odd like psychology thing. It doesn't happen to everyone. I don't know where I got it from, probably some sort of TED talk at some point. But ultimately, the idea being is I used to live into a flat and the flat didn't have much space into it and I didn't have really dedicated space. So every time I wanted to study, I actually had a lamp on my desk and every time I studied, I turned that lamp on and every time I stopped studying, I turned that lamp off and I got into a routine where that lamp was my signal to study and over time on the days that I wasn't in the mood to study, turning on the lamp would sometimes prop enough motivation in me to actually want to study because it was my signal and my brain was thinking if that lamp was on then it's time for me to to actually study the same way where you shouldn't be studying laying on your bed or sitting on a sofa and the reason for that is because that's where you sleep and that's where you relax and normally if you're studying in those positions you're not active enough in order to actually study and understand things that's why we have different rooms in our house for different reasons So the psychology is behind that. So find a space. So ideally, if you've got like a dedicated room that you can use for studying or a a section of the room you can use, that'd be brilliant. If not, try to figure out how you can signal. Now, this doesn't happen overnight either. You know, you have to actually do it for a good week, two weeks, maybe longer in order for it to help trigger that sort of uh, emotion or that motivation to want to study. And some people just find it ludicrous and don't even bother. But It helped me and I thought it'd be worth putting it in the slide. The last item for the slide is to tell other people. So what I mean by this is you see it all the time online. When someone's about to, you know, go on a course or book an exam, they tell everyone, hey, I'm going to book this exam and I'm going to take the exam on this date. And the reason for that is because they want other people to hold them accountable for it. And normally that accountability in a kind of pushes you to study more because not every, you know, no one wants to fail an exam. And the idea of having to tell these people that you've told, that you've kind of book and hopefully you're going to pass the exam, you don't want to tell them that you failed. Now, one really important note to take away from this is there's no... Uh, There's no shame in failing. Failing is obviously a really big part of actually being able to pass the exam to begin with. And failure only occurs when you stop. Failure doesn't happen when you fail an exam. So it's important to know that only when you stop does the failure actually matter. Um, I know people that have failed exams multiple times. Uh, I've, I've failed a few exams myself a few times. It doesn't matter. All that matters is you pass it and you continue. And most of the time, when you see engineers fail exams and then they go back and pass, they're normally better engineers because they understand why they failed, what they had incorrect, and they're able to assess themselves in order to progress further. 
So, you know, tell others, move that accountability to other people and use, in a weird sense, the fear of failure in order to pass the exam. And also don't think it's just exams, you know, don't tell other people, hey, I'm going to pass this exam on this day. There's other things that you can be telling other people in order to, you know, motivate you to continue. Tell them you're going to complete a task, complete objective, fin finish X amount of chapters within this much time, you know, set those goals out. And then the other way is to find people doing the same goals as you, you know, set each other goals into actually being able to uh, be accountable to one another on achieving something. That sometimes help rather than just setting your own goals on a bit of paper and knowing that if you don't hit them, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's all we've got time for this lesson. Um, well, it wasn't really a lesson. It was more of a conversation. But I just thought it's worth going through a review anyway, just to make sure that you know, we're aware of what we were talking about and refresh our memory. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was the blueprint. The blueprint is obviously very important. Uh, it outlines everything that you need to know in order to pass your exam. I would like to see the blueprint being a bit more in depth than what it is, because sometimes it's kind of very generic, like it says OSPF and it says adjacencies, but then it doesn't kind of say what within the OSPF adjacencies you need to know about. Because, you know, as you get further into your studies, there's actually a lot of stuff that goes into OSPF adjacencies. So it's, you know, it's sometimes not necessarily extremely helpful, but it is important to know because obviously as you're moving towards your uh, exam goals through your videos or through your books, it's important that you go and look at the blueprint and ensure that you can put a tick next to all the generic terms that they've mentioned in the blueprint before you go and book your exam. So what else do we talk about? Before you go and play your game or watch your TV series or, you know, binge Netflix, make sure you study before. Don't get uh, the reward the first because it will put you in a slump and it will, you know, waste your endorphins and you won't end up wanting to study. Use the resources how it works for you. So I mentioned that I use videos, but then I use labs and then I go into the books to sort of fill in the gaps. Well, that might not be the right order for you. So, you know, you might not like videos, you might not like books. Labs you can't avoid. Everyone has to lab. If you don't lab, you're simply not learning the technology. Simple as that. Uh, and the only things you shouldn't be labbing is stuff that you already know and you've labbed 101 times. But, you know, sometimes it's best to lab stuff. Uh, oh, and the other thing that's really important is sometimes when you lab items, you realize you don't know it as well as you thought. So maybe you're watching a video that you've seen five times and, you know, you, you're getting a bit bored of it. Well, go lab it because if you can lab it and you can understand what's happening, then you probably don't need to watch the video. So labs are very, very important. Notes, 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 notes. That's what it says here. And notes for me are very important. But again, that's for me. It's how I work. I like to make notes. And I find that as I write it down, it kind of leaves my head. And then I'm able to refer to it in the future. So notes sometimes help. And, you know, if they do, if you are going to spend that much time doing notes, you might as well make them a part of your future studying also. That's going back to making a digital notes find a space or a signal so I mentioned previously about that lamp every time i turned it on i wanted to study that's something to keep in mind or if you've got a space then make sure that that space is not where you are lazing around so make sure it's not studying on your bed you know make sure you're sitting at a desk or something and tell others so you've got accountability you know put in the comment section below this is when i'm going to pass my exam let other people know that you've got goals and when you're looking to hit those goals. Now, I hope this video has been informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.